Good morning. Welcome to Cornerstone Virtual Sunday. I'm Mike Gillen, pastor of Cornerstone United Methodist Church. To those of you, you who are new to Cornerstone, welcome and thank you for joining us. Please contact us at cornerstoneofallon.org, our website. Click on the Connect or Contact Us tab, then fill out the Connect card. To all of you who are on Facebook and have Facebook pages, take a minute and click the share button on our virtual Sunday service to share it with your friends. Once you've done that, then click share now. Our scripture for today will be Joshua 1 verses 1 through 9. Take a moment and find that scripture so you can read it together with me a little bit later in our service. I'm really excited about this edition of Cornerstone Virtual Sunday. Cornerstone was founded in 1807. For most of our history, we were and have been a very solid Methodist church in a small rural Missouri town. The last 30 years has seen the suburbs of St. Louis incorporate O'Fallon, Missouri, where we are. Cornerstone has seen its way through the War of 1812, the Civil War, floods, fires, tornadoes, and many pandemics. We've also seen this country transition from literally using horsepower to get around to automotive transportation. We've seen the expansion of indoor plumbing and electrification, the rapid development of technology, and even human beings walking on the moon. Through all of the twists and turns of Cornerstone's history, we've always celebrated the sacraments of communion and baptism. Today, we're going to be part of the very first Cornerstone Virtual Baptisms. So after my message, make sure you plan on participating in the baptism service that will run following my message. There's a part for you to play in the liturgy of the sacrament. And as the body of Christ, we all have parts to play in the ongoing spiritual development of the ones we baptize here at Cornerstone. I'm very excited to share the baptisms this week, anticipating other virtual baptisms we'll have in the coming weeks. Maybe you are someone who wants to be baptized and you know virtual worship and this virtual baptism will be perfect for you. Jesus promises us in Matthew 18, 20, where two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among them. Through the Holy Spirit, you and I are literally brought together by this virtual technology. This is real worship. So let's worship together. Find in these moments a place of sanctuary where God creates for you an experience of sacred space and time with other people of God. Allow all the distractions in your heart and in your mind to be taken away by the Spirit of God so that you can experience God's grace in this time of worship. So join me. Let's worship together and enter into a time of prayer. Pray with me. Gracious God, you unite us in ways we understand and in ways we don't. Today, during this time of worship, open our hearts and minds to you. Take whatever distracts us away from our hearts and minds so that we're open to your grace. In Christ's name, I pray. Amen. I really hope that today you can see and understand the Spirit of God working in you. And you can discern how God is leading you to live better by faith. Understanding that there are always distractions in our life that keeps us from understanding how we're meant to live and serve as people of God connected to one another. One of the ways we're connected to each other is through our affirmation of faith. We find in the Apostles' Creed a statement of faith that binds us together with Christ's followers throughout history and all around the world. Join me in being bound together with one another through our affirmation of faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May this ancient creed be very relevant and real for you today, binding you with other Christians today and every day. Our scripture for this, for this virtual Sunday comes from Joshua 1, verses 1 through 9. I'm reading from the New International Version translation of the Bible. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' aid, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now then, you and all these people getting ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give to them, to the Israelites, I will give you every place where you set your foot, just as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the desert to Lebanon, from the great river the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. No one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous, because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep the book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it night and day, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will go with you wherever you go. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our message series for July is titled Forward. Each week I'll look at the ways God is leading you and me forward in grace to embody the love of Christ. Today I'm going to talk about the way God is leading us forward to live a courageous life of faith. We are meant to be the people of a forward-living faith, a faith that narrowly relies on devotion to God and inspiration from God's Spirit to embody the Scripture's call to grace. Courage is one of those qualities of character that goes underappreciated until it's required of one's actions. Courage isn't just a state of mind. Courage isn't just a talking point or a philosophical principle. Courage is an activity of heart, an action of embodied virtue. Courage is the overcoming of fear, the defeat of the dangerous, the spirit of adventure that claims a destiny in the face of overwhelming resistance. Today's scripture in the Old Testament book of Joshua recounts the speech God gives to the new young leader of the Hebrew people, Joshua. The Hebrews had been wandering in the wilderness for 40 years, unable to summon the courage and the vision to claim the promised land, the spiritual and physical home offered to them by God. As Joshua assumes the leadership mantle and anticipates his first decisions, God gives him these instructions. Again, God said to Joshua, I will give you every place where you set your foot. As I promised Moses, no one will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will never leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and courageous because you will lead these people to inherit the land I swore to their ancestors to give them. Joshua was about to lead the people of God to take historic steps that would begin a new chapter in their relationship with God as a chosen people, a light of grace to the world. Why would God tell Joshua to be strong and courageous? God promises to be by Joshua's side, never to leave or forsake him. What would make Joshua feel weak and afraid? What would make a leader feel afraid? The truth is that every good leader has those moments when they feel the burden of leadership, the weight of responsibility for the lives of others. 
God's speech anticipates the worries the young Joshua will face, the uncertainty of whether or not to decide for or against someone, and the difficulty of facing the cries of the opposition when he takes an unpopular stand. As a leader, Joshua would have much to be afraid of. There were literally giants in the land God was urging the Hebrews to inhabit. They were already indigenous people living in Canaan, where they were going. The Hebrew people were going to try and take over that land. The Hebrew people weren't just walking into a promised land without facing opposition. They were a chosen people and had chosen to wander in the wilderness because the Hebrews were afraid that the land God had given them would be too dangerous to live in. Joshua would have to take these fearful people and embody God's strength and courage so that they would have a forward-living faith. The challenges Joshua faced would be the challenges every generation of God worshipers to follow him would face in one form or another. The world that does not worship God with absolute devotion offers you and me alternative realities to the one provided by God. Living faithfully to God requires the faithfulness to be strong and courageous because God's ways are not the ways of the world. In Joshua 1, God is offering the young Hebrew leader a way to find guidance in any circumstance. Don't you look for God's guidance every day? The Lord said to Joshua, Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful where you go. The image given to us by the Bible is of Joshua leading the Hebrew people forward, relying on the law of life that God had given Moses. Go forward, God is saying. Be strong and very courageous by not allowing the world on the left or on the right to tempt you to leave God's narrow way. It's scriptural imagery of walking along a path in a wilderness. The path will take us Somewhere God wants us to go, deviating from that path, turning away from God and straight to the left or the right of the path, leads to a detour away from God's purposes and plans. Go forward, God is saying, and find your intended place, your purpose, your life. God isn't talking here about a political point of view or a, a religious perspective that we might think of in left or right. This is about life direction. Again, be strong and very courageous. Do not turn from the left or to the right, that you may succeed wherever you go. These scriptural admonitions call out to us as if God is looking over our shoulder, or over God's shoulder, back to us, hollering to us to keep our eyes forward, to keep putting one foot in front of the other. The world offers us alternative routes suggesting wisdom and temporary uh, battles to be waged on one side or the other, just a step or two off the intended path gets us lost, the Bible implies. So don't deviate. Keep our focus on God, working every day to grow in grace, to reflect devotion to God and what we say and do. The Bible is calling us to a life that gives us uh, a way of moving away from distractions and moving towards God. Can you identify those distractions in your life, those addictions, those shiny objects that beckon to you daily to give your time, your energy, your devotion to them? God is calling you today to be courageous and to live in a forward-looking faith that depends on God and God alone. The Bible is also talking to us about the very human experience of being so overwhelmed with fear that we choose daily routines and patterns of life that close us off to God and God's Spirit. Today, God's Spirit calls to you and promises you the strength and courage to take one step of faith after another this week. What would be a forward living faith for you? What would it look like this week? For some, forward living faith means admitting that a life of anger and frustration has become all you know. You're wandering in a wilderness day after day, ignoring the call of God to take time to pray, avoiding reading and studying and meditating on the scripture. Your heart isn't filled with the songs of faith sung in worship Sunday after Sunday. For you this week is an opportunity to claim a life of forward living faith, 
Stop turning from one way or the other away from God, hearing the world's call to you, and instead hear God's claims on your life and claim those blessings and promises from God. So what steps can you take this week to allow God's grace to help you move forward with strong, courageous faith? First, admit to God what is keeping you from living faithfully toward God. What is it that keeps you from committing more fully to God every day? Begin to give up that distraction and start taking a step, one step at a time, toward God. Second, start reflecting God's Spirit in the way you live. Ask the Spirit of God to live through you. As you allow God to give you strength and courage, you'll find you're more hopeful. You'll discover that your thoughts are more peaceful. You'll more naturally reflect joy, and you'll be a person that reflexively is more loving towards others. Ask God to help you live with strength and courage today. God's way will lead you to trust in God's provision for your life. You'll become more concerned about the well-being of others. You'll pray more. And you'll discover your love for God is growing. You and I are meant to move forward in our faith. Allow God to lead you to live better by faith this week. God is constantly reaching out to you. Accept that help from God today. Understand that prayer leads us to live better by faith every day. Prayer is our lifeline to God, giving clarity to what God wants for us and helping us understand how the Bible's teachings can become part of our life. So I want you to join me in this prayer time. Let me let you know about some prayer requests that have come our way that you can be a part of. I won't name the full names of people, but I want to mention several folks today who you can be praying for because they're going through some great difficulty. First, I hope you'll pray for my friend Stephen. He's someone I've known since my seminary days. He's a great pastor. He's fighting cancer. He's a faithful friend, a devoted pastor, and a faith-filled man of God. I hope you'll pray for Stephen this week. Pray for Jenny and Kevin. Jenny's father died suddenly on July 1st. We're praying for you all. Joan, I hope you'll be praying for her. Her sister, Rosemary, died on June 30th. Joan, we're praying for you. Lori's brother-in-law, Mark, was diagnosed this week with the coronavirus. We pray for his health. Ted, who's part of our church, has some unresolved health concerns. We're praying for Ted's health. And Doris is recovering from surgery. Doris, we hope that you continue to improve, and we're grateful to hear you are. In addition to these concerns, I hope we'll be praying for our elected leaders, that God would give them wisdom. Pray for our bishop, the Reverend Bob Farr, and our district superintendent, the Reverend Linda Harris, as they lead us as a church and a denomination. We pray for our sisters and brothers in Christ at Cornerstone in this region and all around the world. And I'm praying for you today that you would find God in your life, God leading you to live better by faith, God meeting you where you are. So let's take a moment. Join me in prayer. Our God, we approach you with grateful hearts, humbling ourselves before you. Your strength, your courage sustains us. Through eyes of faith, help us to see that we rely on you and are completely dependent on you day to day. Also, God, help us to see that you are constantly reaching out to us, meeting us right where we are, offering us love and direction and a way to live better every day. Inspire in us faith in your Son and help us to see that as we turn to you, we are called then to pray for others. So we lift up those we've mentioned today. Those who are grieving, we ask for their comfort. Those who are hurting, we ask for their help. Today, God, remind us of what it means to be your people. Teach us how to pray as we remember your son's prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. It has been great to be with you for this edition of Cornerstone Virtual Sunday. Immediately following this blessing, 
I'll be leading us in the sacrament of baptism. I'm so excited to share this first virtual baptism with the Cornerstone Church family. Please participate in the sacrament as if you were in the room with those being baptized and with their family. You'll have a part to play, and the video is going to lead you through it. So allow me to offer you a blessing as we conclude our worship together. As we leave this time, the grace of God and the light of Christ go before us. Be blessed. And be a blessing to a world that needs God's hope, peace, joy, and love. Amen.